that happened, they not only had all the public housing and low-income housing in the center of the city, and of course poverty was required of black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the deal. I mean, That's this was right. the law. You know, basically you're black, you're poor, mm -hmm. you're white, you, got, you have a shot. A lot more white mm -hmm. people do could have a shot. So they set it up by transportation. So now the buses were going to stop at the county lines and they were going to give the counties the right to prevent transportation for anybody who had to ride public transportation. That's still true today. Mm -hmm. And then they built new expressways right through the historic black neighborhoods. That's so right. In the counties, Every one of them. Move in and out. Now that's the plan in 1970. Mm -hmm. It's a very effective plan. And still but, going on today. You know, in 1977, uh, we get a black majority on the city council uh, hmm. because of a, a Supreme Court decision. Uh, Henry Marsh becomes mayor. Um, Henry, who, whose house was about two blocks from here, right? 31st Street? Yeah, I thought he lived on 31st, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And um, Henry becomes mayor, and the schools are integrated, sort of. Uh, by, by that time, the schools are about 90, 85 to 90 percent black in Richmond. Um, they were 70 percent black at the time of Judge Marriage's decision in 1970. So in 1977, they've gotten up to about 85 percent black. Um, however, um, a lot of the black leadership of Richmond is still living in the city of Richmond within this jurisdiction. Um, now, <coughs> And a lot of money goes into the public schools and a lot of care. Uh, the people teaching and running the Richmond Public Schools are the absolute cream of the crop. Uh, these are folks who are very dedicated, uh, quite well educated themselves, and, by the way, couldn't have gotten jobs as lawyers and corporate officers because they weren't permitted to. So you really, you really have the true cream of the crop running the educational system in Richmond in 1977. It's really an incredible bunch of folks. I knew a lot of them, still know some of them. Um, and uh, these are the people who led us through. All right, so now we're going to move forward. We've got open housing. We begin to get new subdivisions built. And we get not just white flight, but black flight. See, I'm telling you the way I see it. Because this is what I'm dealing with, what we're dealing with. And uh, what happens is, um, the black middle class largely leaves the city of Richmond. The first time I saw this was when my child was in Henderson Middle School. All four of my kids went through Richmond Public Schools all the way. I was PTA president in two different schools, um, and um, I'm married to a third grade teacher who's still pretty active, so I, I see a lot of it. Um, you know, my pillow talk is Richmond Public Schools. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we, uh, we begin to get a, a real change in the, in the demographics now. We have white flight and black flight. Uh, so now, no, no, our schools, 90% of our schools today in Richmond are 90% are black. reduced lunch. 90% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of our schools. 90% free and reduced lunch. Now, there's nothing wrong with somebody who's on free and reduced lunch. You're just poorer. But, in fact, if you want an education indication of what's necessary, the uh, poverty is one of the quickest ways to tell the reading level of the parents. Mm -hmm. And, therefore, the work that needs to be done with the child. It's just as simple as that. It also is a good indicator of some of the emotional stress. Yes, sir. A higher percentage of emotional stress mm -hmm. that people are going on. Is anybody here a teacher? Used to. Okay. So this is hey, no Marty. secret. This is what we all deal with, but we won't talk about it. So today's Armstrong Kennedy. Today's Armstrong Kennedy is not the Armstrong Kennedy of 30 years ago. Mm -mm. And a whole lot, you know, this city, this metro city is full of the graduates of Armstrong and Kennedy. How many of y'all are graduates of Armstrong and Kennedy? Thank you very much. All right, Maggie Walker, just for the heck of it. <laughs> I had two kids go to Maggie Walker, too, but it was the governor's school at that point. Um, so a lot of the folks who graduated from Armstrong and Kennedy, and we have some really, you know, powerful folks throughout our community, 
really don't have a clue what's there today, what has to be worked with. Um, I deal with 36 armed strong kids a year, and you know, um, many of them are the most mature person in their household. A whole lot of them are raising brothers and sisters. There is not, um, the number of IEPs exceeds 50% of the population, but the staffing is no better than any other high school. So you go to Deep Run, you get the same staffing that you do at Armstrong. Uh, and then they tell us that we're a failed school um, because when we're dealing with the kids who have the biggest need in the entire metropolitan area, we can't get the same graduation rate as a school. That's right. As a school that has the children of PhDs. That's right. Them the breakfast. That's, good. That's right. So they changed the language during this period of time. Mm -hmm. Now, 1970, and I've read this stuff, and I, you know, if I had extra time, I'd do the studies on it. In 1970, before the schools of Richmond were integrated, you know, I'm just talking about a little bit of integration we had in my county. I'm talking about when, when we did the cross-town busing. Uh, before that, the Times-Dispatch used to run articles um, about uh, the, not wanting to integrate the schools because um, of the poor quality of black education. That was the word. Um, after the schools were integrated, they changed the editorials and said, all the schools have poor quality. Now, quality becomes a code word. Mm -hmm. I need you to listen to that. Quality is the key code word. Every week for 40 years in an editorial in the Times Dispatch and News Leader, they used words like that to describe who we are and what we're doing here. Um, never until actually two weeks ago. Anything that suggested any comprehension of who we are, what we're doing, what the struggle is, um, always abuse. That's the, that is the way Richmond lived for 40 years mm -hmm. in terms of public education. Mm -hmm. Now that had a bad side to it on the other side. Mm -hmm. What that meant was that the folks who were running the Richmond Public Schools, and you know, I, I dare say I know as many of them as anybody in this room, mm -hmm. the folks that were running the public schools made sure that they never let on anything that was wrong. That's right. <laughs> kept it, How are you gonna do kept it covered up. That's right. That's right. That's right. You can't do it. But you see that defensiveness that builds up in the context of oppression. Self-protection. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime the governor or the General Assembly says, we're going to make you do more with less, you say, yes, sir, I sure am, because I'm, I'm as good as anybody else. <laughs> Maybe that was a good thing to learn some other time, but that really wasn't a very good thing to learn right then. You know, the good thing to learn was, you know, how you expect me to do mm -hmm. what you want to do with less than you did miracle. That's right. But people wouldn't say that. Instead, they hid, became defensive, worked, worked their hearts out. Worked their hearts out. With an increasingly difficult situation, the metropolitan city of Richmond, um, between 1970 and 2010 doubled, but all the economic benefit went outside the city limits. Right. The General Assembly, by boxing in the city of Richmond, has mm -hmm. an independent city. It's the only state in the country that has independent cities. That's right. General Assembly left Richmond without the capacity to issue Loses. bombs. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear this, because people don't know what it is our folks are dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, when Manny Deese became city manager, Mm -hmm. they, they summoned him to Wall Street, as they could only do to the first black city manager in Richmond. Mm -hmm. And they said, sit down. I want to tell you that you may not issue any bonds except to replace bonds that retire. That you are completely bonded to the limit. You do not have any more money. And since Manny's time in the early 80s, our uh, city of Richmond has only been able to issue bonds to replace those bonds that Mm -hmm. um, what that meant was that we had the oldest, you know, our average school age is 65 years old. We couldn't replace our jail. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way we were able to replace our jail and to build four new schools in the last 10 years is, excuse me, is that um, uh, Governor Wilder's um, time as, as mayor uh, was so filled with contention. Am I saying this well? That's right. That's right. I'm trying to say this. That's right. Governor Wilder's time as mayor was so filled with contention 
That's right. That he was unable to get any agreement on the issuing of any bonds for a four-year period. Mm -hmm. And that meant uh, when Reverend Jones became mayor, when Dwight became mayor, um, he had four years backlog plus the next four years of bonds would be replaced. And he was able finally to replace a jail that had been absolutely intolerable for 20 years. Incidentally, the state paid 50% to help build jails in the counties, but only paid 25% to help build a jail in the city. See this stuff going on. So now we've come to this situation. In this situation, where we are today, just to kind of say a couple of things straight out. Our school budget has decreased 25% in the last five years. That's right. Now, if you're underfunded to start with, and you are dealing with the most treacherous and difficult educational task in the Commonwealth of Virginia, except for Treacherous. That's right. If you're underfunded in the, in the, and at the start, and you're dealing with the most treacherous situation, mm -hmm. on behalf of the entire state, mm -hmm. you know, if we have been given the task to really help some of the children in greatest trouble, um, en masse within this thing, and you lose 25% of your budget in the midst of a public rhetoric that says the problem is you're overspending, um, you're arrogant, and you're, um, you're basically uh, not functioning properly. And they actually accused <laughs> some of our finest people of misusing funds, uh, mm -hmm. which just breaks my heart. Um, you, really, you really are in a very bad situation. The, and the only thing that I can really figure in this, um, I'll just tell this in a minute. I, I got an idea. <laughs> so here we are, 75% of the budget we had five years ago. And as you know, uh, we've got some people who are suggesting that, um, that we ought to be closing schools and uh, have uh, seemed to have abandoned some of the ideals that we've been fighting for. So let, um, what's going on today and what do I think is important? First, I want to say that I like, I like your title, your name, Coalition for Quality Education, and I hope that's what you're about. You. you know, I don't think they should have closed Clark Springs either. And the thing I was angriest about of all, my wife teaches at William Fox, by the way. The thing I was angriest about um, was that we fought so hard to get effective racially and class integrated uh, education in this yes. town and to blow that opportunity yes. and, be, and to be indifferent at a time when we have a chance to increase mm -hmm. it yes. is just sad. It uh, is. It's tragic. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's hard to know. You never know what people do deliberately and what they do simply because mm -hmm. of the fog in their heads. You really mm -hmm. never know. Uh, but, uh, you know, it looks like a dog and it walks like a dog. It is it a, dog. Like a dog. It's, it's a, a dog. Like a dog. It's a big and dog. I'm not quite sure how the dog got there. <laughs> it's a big dog. But it has a little bit of dog quality to mm -hmm. it. Okay. What's going on? So, <laughs> but, all things being equal, folks, our issues are a lot bigger than that. Right. And we have to know that. Because we're in a situation where there's some folks who virtually would like to abolish the Richmond public school system. Yeah. Yes, who, they would. Are, there are some folks around all over this country, and some of them have been in the governor's office and around there for the last four years who don't believe in public education. Mm -hmm. We're looking at profiteering <laughs> off what remains of our public system don't know about it, you know, I'll be glad to give you a couple of books to read about it. It's really pretty serious stuff. So there's some folks around in the wings whose motivations are not very good. Uh, that does not mean that the folks who are our colleagues on the school board or within the system are that way at all. It has nothing to do with that. It just, just means it's a very tragic, scary time. Look at North Carolina, look at Tennessee. Look at Michigan, look at Arizona. There are some school systems being abolished today. Look at Philadelphia, mm -hmm. look at Chicago, Chicago, look at DC. Now, a lot of these places they put in 
um, what they call charter schools. Some of them are good charter schools, some of them are profiteering charter schools, but they have basically abandoned the major portion of the public school system. So, you know, they might have a nice little school over here somewhere out on Broad Street, but I'm wondering what's happening to Art Armstrong and Martin Luther King and George Wythe and John Marshall. Because those are the kids I'm working with, you know, the kids we care about as well. All of our children are important. I know I could talk forever. You all don't need that to sleep. So, what can we do? First thing we need to do is advocacy. And I'm talking about general advocacy because that isn't being done and hasn't been done on part of our school system. The State Board of Education does no advocacy for the system. All it does is throw further demands at it. It's really hilarious. You know, the, uh, we're not funding you and we're putting higher demands on you. Um, and in order to fix you, we're going to put higher demands on you. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, but the State Board of Education should be talking to the General Assembly about the fact that they pay more money per school-aged child for a child in Chesterfield County than they do a child in That's Chester. right. There's a formula Been called doing it for years. Uh, Composite Index that the General Assembly works by. Um, it purports to be um, some form of objective index, but in fact, you know, it looks just like the stuff of 100 years ago. You know, more money goes here than here. Um, nobody's talking about that, but everybody who's in schools knows that we get less money per school age child for a child here in Churchill than they do over in Western Hidbranco mm -hmm. or in Chesterfield from the state of Virginia. So there's advocacy needed, and people need to go after that. And all of us can agree on that. Whichever slate is on the school board can agree on that. Whoever's in the mayor's office can agree on that. We need to, to, to advocate as a city on behalf of our children, not be drawn into fights with one another, which is what so easily happens. We need advocacy in terms, and we really do, in terms of this testing regimen which is put down on our children. You know, um, there's something that happened here and in New York in this last year. In order to improve uh, uh, the schools, they simply raised the level of pass on the test this year without giving any instruction for it. So the assumption was that the children would fail. Mm -hmm. Up front. Now you've got no business giving tests to children with the assumption that they'll fail. Wow. They do it all the time. That breaks the heart. It's, they it's do it stupid. all the time. No reasonable teacher would ever do that. It's and yet good. that's what these policy people do. That's what they do. But not just that, as you know, they have made the testing regimen so threatening and so persistent that we're just basically trying to get our kids to fill in the right blanks so that they don't close our schools. Now what, what kind of help is that? So we have to advocate against that and all of us can do that. It does, it does not matter which, which group of school board is in, it does not matter who's in the mayor's office. We all know it, but you've got to speak out about it. Um, third thing I want to say is, look, you know, we've come through a time of horrible racism between black and white people, but you don't get to substitute horrible fighting between black people for that black-white thing. And, and there's a lot of nastiness going around in the city right now. Come on, Doc. That's not right. That's right. It really isn't right. I don't know mm -hmm. who wants it. I don't know what benefit they it is. Do it. I don't know if somebody outside is producing mm -hmm. it. I don't know if folks have just decided they can't figure out mm -hmm. how to find a way to be civil with one another. Yeah, um, some... We cannot afford to have the kind of thing that's happened. We can't afford to have what happened between the mayor's office and, uh, and the superintendent two years ago in the school board. That's right. We cannot afford to have that kind of disunity among yeah. ourselves because Although we may disagree about exactly what to do, the fundamental need for our children is enormous. That's right. That's right. Um, every one of our schools in this city of Richmond um, right now needs community support. You have to make up for the parents that can't be there. Oh, wow. You have to, if you've got the college education, you've got to be there with the parent 
with the child of the parent uh, who has an eighth grade education. If you've got a husband or a wife who can stay at home, you've got to be there at, uh, to help out at that school for the child of a single parent. And we have, we have stuff we just flat out have to do within this context. And that's something we all can do. It doesn't matter which school board is elected. It doesn't matter who's in the mayor's office. This is something we all have to do. And this is priority stuff. We need racial and class integration in our schools. You know, the thing is set up at the moment so that it's really hard to do, right? Because we've got this economic disintegration between the city limits and the counties. So, you know, basically I've got a whole lot of white people sending their kids to school in the city and a whole lot of black sure class people sending their kids to school in the city. I mean, I, when I went to see the principal of one of my kids' schools and found out that I was struggling to make my kid able to survive and she'd got her kids in the Henrico Public Schools, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's when I learned about that. Um, and that's the way it's been. Um, but we need what integration we can get, and we need to work for it. And we need to help it to happen. We need to be sympathetic to the difficulties it creates. Um, you know, Raleigh and Wake County did one of the best jobs on this uh, until they had a, a little uh, Koch Brothers funded revolution that threw out the, they did it, they threw out the school board. Um, and what they said was, our, our goal is to have a school that has no more than 40% of its kids on free and reduced lunch. It was a simple way of saying the task works well when you've got an That's integrated cool. student body. Let me say this to you. Um, my kids have been in integrated schools and often very, uh, very, very minority in that situation for, for um, all four of them, all the way through. And there's no question that integrated education is better than segregated education, period. Because education isn't just about what's in the book. It's about what you have to create within a classroom in order for the classroom to work. And when that classroom is composed of diversity uh, in terms of skill, race, cultural background, income, uh, tremendous things can happen as long as the teacher's not overwhelmed uh, by what's going on. So we need to work constantly and consistently and unembarrassedly <laughs> it works. <laughs> for real integration over and over again to press for it. And it's going to happen. People, you know, middle class people will be moved back in the city more and more. Most black folks do too, not just the white folks. Okay. Um, say a word about charter schools. Uh, we've had charter schools in Richmond for 20 years, 30 years. We have Richmond Community High School, we have Open High School, we have Performance Learning Centers, we have Franklin Military Academy. Um, we've had a number of specialized charter schools with a different name. As long as they're within the system, Patrick Henry's and others, as long as they're within the system so that when they grow, the system grows. As long as you don't let somebody come in and try to pitch you against each other, as long as, you know, the new um, Peyton McCoy um, school for, uh, for girls is... <laughs> is prospering and Armstrong is prospering as well. We're okay. Can work together. There are things we can do together, but you can't let people pit you against each other. That's right. You know, this is not a chance where we get to throw some of our kids off the cliff and pick up the others. Right. We don't get to do that. That does not mean you don't have special programs, not only for kids who need remediation, but to let kids who can go ahead faster go ahead faster. You got to do it. You got to do it both ways. Okay, last thing I have to say is the same as the first thing I have to say. We've got a spiritual problem, and we're at a very special moment in history. Um, two weeks ago, I was sitting at, at who's been to Richmond Hill besides, uh, besides me and Beverly? Yeah, I'm, right. I'm seeing some good stuff. So I'm, I'm over here sitting at supper at Richmond Hill with, you know, 35 people, which is my normal supper. And... Uh, um, somebody says to me, um, 
What do you think would make the single biggest difference in the Richmond Public Schools? And I said, um, and I don't know why I said this, because if I think about it, I'm not sure it's true, but I said, um, if the Richmond Times Dispatch would decide it wanted to support them. Ain't trying to support nobody. I'm not joking. No, no, no. Because we have a spiritual issue, you see. I mean, it is a spiritual issue. It's not that everything's perfect in the Richmond Public Schools. God knows it isn't. Uh, but you don't make it better by dumping on it. You really don't. Um, you don't make the kids better. You don't make the parents better. You don't make the teachers better. You don't make the administrators better. Um, you don't make anybody better. You know, um, we're, we're, we're bearing, we're, um, we have the fruit of that kind of abuse. We've been living with it. It's not right. It's the exact opposite of what's right. The next morning, there was the first positive article, editorial I've ever seen in the Richmond Times Dispatch about the Richmond Public Schools. Um, Todd Culbertson, who's the president editor, wrote it. Uh, it's the first time he ever talked about poverty. It's the first time he ever talked about the particular issues we have to deal with. Um, it, um, you know, I didn't fully agree with it, but the spirit of it was right. Um, it was a constructive, um, I want to be a help um, type editorial. Now, we're at a very critical moment here. We're going to choose a superintendent. Um, you know, God knows what kind of fights we're going to be in over that. But I want you to pray for that. And what I really want you to pray for is somebody who understands that our number one issue here is a spiritual issue. And that we actually have to work together. We, we need twice the resources we have. Doesn't matter what part of the school political debate you're on. We need twice the resources that we have. Everybody who knows anything knows that. By the way, national best practices are that if you have a school that is 90% free and reduced lunch, it costs 2.2 times as much to provide the level of education you need as it does in a school of normal demographic. 2.2 times as much. We need a level of resources that we do not have, and we need to find the best way we can to support one another in that process. And we cannot afford to have a superintendent or a situation where we are put at, at odds with one another again. We cannot afford to have a situation where somebody wants to fire our teachers. We cannot afford to have a situation where Michelle Reed comes and wrecks up the Richmond Public Schools like she did in New York, I mean Washington. Uh, we, we can't afford to have innovation and creative thought. Yes. Like we need it. Yes. So hear, the, hear this narrow path and pray to God that he will help us as a community be who we're supposed to be at this time for this right cause because nothing could be more important.